Hello, I'm Tamash from Polygon Flow. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this scene in Unreal Engine. I will try to showcase the workflow I use here at Polygon Flow, so this won't really be a step by step tutorial. This scene is an example of how you can approach environment building for the Valderams Art Challenge by Lurta Studio. I will be using several of their assets and speeding up my process with the Dash world building plugin. From layout to lighting, we will go through the key steps. Stick around until the end to catch tricks that will speed up your workflow and bring your environments to life faster. So let's jump in. I'm starting here on the Lurta Studios website. The goal is to create a stunning environment using either Max Bedelenko's concept art or your own. I choose the city of Nogrod as my starting point. To access the Cosmos Assets library in Unreal, I install the Rocket plugin for UE5. For this scene, I use two main asset packs. The Medieval Russian Village pack and the Viking Village pack, along with a few extra assets from the Cosmos library. It's also worth mentioning, if you apply to the challenge, you get two full asset packs completely free, ready to use in your scenes right away. To help me build the scene more efficiently, I will also use the Dash plugin a word building tool for Unreal Engine. Since I want to create this environment as quickly as possible, Dash will be a huge help throughout the process. Now we are here in Unreal Engine. I've downloaded the necessary asset packs and opened up the overview scene from the Russian Village pack. I've also installed the Cosmos Rocket plugin, which allows me to access Cosmos assets directly inside the engine, including a lot of free ones. It's super straightforward. I just select the asset I want Choose the game engine and quality and download it. Or just simply drag and drop them into the scene. Let's begin with the main tower. To make it faster, I'm using the dash grid scatter tool this way, I don't have to place each piece manually, one by one. I set up the tool, and then I can save it as a preset for later use. I'm not focusing on the details yet. It's enough to get the general shape and structure down at this stage. I'm also creating this blank structure preset. And I'm also using the same method for this improvised structure. Again, I'm not worried about the details right now. I want to move quickly and block out the main volumes of the scene. If you don't have two monitors and still want to view reference images inside the engine, you can use the dashboard feature. You can drag images directly into it. I'm adding my inspiration image from my desktop. My goal isn't to recreate the image exactly. I'm mainly following the core composition and the overall theme. Next, I will start shaping the environment around my scene. I've added a water plane to the scene, and I also modeled a simple bridge in Blender. After that, I started looking for a potential camera angle. For lighting, I'm using the Ultra Dynamic Sky plugin, which lets me quickly set up the overall lighting and atmosphere. One of the best features of Dash is that I can access my assets across all my projects. No need to manually copy asset folders from one project to another. 
All I have to do is open a project, compute and tag my assets in the Dash Content Browser, and from then on, they will be available in any other project. We actually have a full tutorial on this. You can find the link in the description. So, in the Dash Content Browser, you will see your tagged assets alongside Fab, Polyhaven and Quixel assets. If you want to learn more about the Content Browser itself, we've got a tutorial on that too, also linked below. Once my assets are tagged, I can easily scatter them using Dash, or drop them using physics tools. Scatter can also be controlled with splines. I go ahead and create one using Dash. Then, with proximity masking, I can control my scattered assets with this spline. I'm using the grid scatter to create a loading platform on the ground. These scattered instances can be baked at any time, which lets you modify them individually if needed. Now I'm dragging in a few Cosmos assets into the scene. For adding more details to the environment, the physics tools of Dash are super helpful. For example, I'm throwing a few assets into this bucket and duplicating them using the physics drop. Another great tool is the physics paint, which lets me scatter planks between barrels in a very natural way. I can also scatter foliage with dash and then mask it as needed. Using masking tables, I can include multiple assets in the same proximity mask setup and tweak each one's masking distance individually. To add snow on top of the assets, I'm using the Easy Snow plugin. Now I want to add some hanging icicles along the roof edges. So I will draw a curve and use some icicle assets I found in a Cosmos pack to scatter them along it. You can add multiple curves to the same scatter and even extended curves will be followed automatically by the scattered meshes. The main structures are done, just a few more details to go. First, I will create some hanging cables between the rooftops. For this, I'm using the dash cable tool. You can easily connect two or more assets with cables and adjust their gravity and count.
I'm also adding a few more detailed assets. These were all found in the Cosmos Rocket Library. I'm placing a few fog planes using Dash. These are animated fog cards to help bring atmosphere to the scene. And that's the last step. And now here's the final render of the scene. I hope this gave you a good overview for the Whale Drums Art Challenge. If you would like to learn more about Dash or see future updates and behind the scenes breakdowns, feel free to like, subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.